Hey guys, if you're looking to learn how to mix and master your songs, I have an exciting video for you today. One of the viewers in my recent video said, hey, can you master an R&B boom bap style song? And although I don't have any R&B boom bap style beats, I do have an R&B trap beat that I made last year. So for this video, I'm gonna walk through some of the thought process, plugins and techniques I use to get my songs to sound crisp and ready to distribute on all the streaming services. So if you're interested in taking your songs to that next level, stick around for this video because we're going to jump right in. Let's get it. All right. So as you can see from what I have on the screen, I've pulled up the stems from a song I released last year called Ocean Waves. So these are the unprocessed stems. So let's hear how they sound like. All right, so let's start to master this track. All right, the first thing I want to add is some EQ. And when you're mastering and you're using EQ, you can do some reductive EQ. So you can reduce from some of the tones. So if there's harshness or if there's some resonance, you can remove some things. And then you can also do some coloring after where you actually change the tone. Now, the EQ I'm going to use for today will be a FabFilters Pro-Q3. And now that I have Pro-Q3 pulled up, let's see. And one of the things that Pro-Q3 has is the Spectrum Analyzer here. So if you have that enabled, you can just hover and it'll show me areas of interest. So you see right there, it's saying, hey, maybe, maybe you need to look at here. So let's, let's just start to pull some of these. So right here, I can already see some of these will probably be resonance. Okay, and let's solo these and play. Yeah, that's some resonance there. Now let's make it dynamic. Okay, I'm happy with that. Next, let's look at adding some compression. So for that, I'm going to use Fab Filters Pro C2 as well. So I'm going to set the threshold to something relatively high because I'm not looking to squash everything. I'm just looking to glue the things together. So I'm going to set it maybe to minus 11 dB. I'm going to start to pull it back a little bit if, if I find it's not compressing enough. The ratio right now, by default, when you open it up, it's set to four to one. That means for every four decibels that go beyond our threshold of minus, what did I set it? Minus 11 dB. So for every four decibels that go beyond that, only one decibel will be allowed to come out. So that's a pretty, pretty uh, high ratio. I'm going to roll that down to maybe two to one for now and we can fiddle with it. So I also don't want it to start compressing right away. So I'm going to set the attack to about maybe 60 milliseconds. We can fiddle around with it. I'm going to play and fiddle around. I just want to explain what I'm doing. So when that signal crosses through that threshold, I don't want it to start compressing right away. So I've set a relatively slow attack and then release. I can let it be a fairly fast release because as soon as it crosses over and starts compressing, I want it to start letting go after after 70 milliseconds, I'll, I'll fiddle with it. Lastly, the knee. So essentially you see right here, they even give you a visual. So let me play. See right here in the cross guards, this is where my threshold is. And the knee is how the compressor works. So does it compress right away, right at the threshold? Or if we have a soft knee, it starts to ease that compression. So that transition, it starts compressing just a little bit earlier. And you can see they give you a visual. So if I go softer, it starts to kind of smooth out. If I go hard knee, it basically waits until that threshold is hit and then it starts compressing. So I don't want it to be a hard compressor. I want it to be a smooth. So I'm going to set the knee fairly soft and uh, let's make the style mastering. So let's listen and dial this in. So if you see from this, it's just rolling back just a little bit and it's fairly smooth. We don't want it to go right hard. We just kind of want to glue everything together. So now the other option we have here in the side chain, if you don't want maybe your kick to trigger the compressor, you can start to roll off and it'll only compress the signal that is occurring in here.
All right, next, let's do a little bit of mid side EQing. I always like to pull out some of that bottom end information from the sides and then boost it in the mid. So let's use the Pro Q3 for this as well. I know in past videos I've used Pulsar 8200. Sometimes I use Isotope. I like to switch to different plugins just to kind of show you how it's done with each plugin. So let's pull Pro Q3 again. So even though I'm going to be listening in and dialing in all of the changes, I do know, generally speaking, that I like to cut around 100 hertz in the sides. So I can add a low cut and then I can change it here from stereo to just side. So it's starting to cut around 100 hertz. I'll, I'll dial it in myself and I also want to make it resonant. So where I start to cut, I like to boost a little bit right before it cuts. So there's going to be a little bit of a boost uh, around 112 hertz in the sides. And then let's add another low shelf only in the mid around the same place. So where this one starts to cut off, let's boost this about maybe not three decibels, maybe about two decibels, but let's let's listen in. Also in the sides, let's add some brightness with a high shelf. Let's make this only the side. See, all I'm doing here is taking the side information, the stair information, you'll hear what it sounds like. And I'm just adding some brightness without adding it to the center. All right, next, let's add some saturation. My go-to is always the black box. Sometimes I do mid-side saturation. Sometimes I just use the HG2, not the mid-side version. Let's see what we can do. Let's toggle it on and off. I like it. I don't want to overdo it, but I like it. All right, next, let's see if there's any resonant frequencies I didn't pick up in the Pro Q3, so we can just use Soothe for that. right up here i feel like there's some some noise there that i don't like that's better okay i've had a bunch of luck with the god particle on my last tracks that i did so let's see if we can add the god particle on this mix as well the first thing i do is disable everything and let's pull down this just a little bit and the output a little bit. I don't like to use the limiter. I have better limiters than this, but let's add some color. A word of advice, especially when you have a nice colorful plugin like this, try to close your eyes when you're adjusting, especially if it's one knob. If it's depends, some plugins you need to see what you're doing, but if it's one knob that is doing a lot of things like saturation, stereo width, enhances some of the transients, don't let the plugin trick you. Actually try to listen to what it's doing. So oftentimes if I'm using this, I'll just dial it in. I'll try to look down or try to close my eyes just so I don't necessarily go to a number like oh 100 percent or 150 percent that i'm trying to listen in to say okay sounds good up to this point past this point it sounds like trash so that's just a quick word of advice So just as a safety check, after I add the God particle, I always add an imager. So pull up the ozone imager. Let's take a listen. All 
All right, so for our limiter, I'm gonna use Sonable Smart Limit. I do find it fairly transparent and I don't wanna add too much character to the sound because I think the mix and the master already sounds good enough. So let's set our limit down to minus one dB and then we'll push up the gain as the song plays. We're hitting about 14 luffs over here. Perfect. So it's set to universal. Let's have the smart limiter learn our mix and let's see what adjustment it makes. Okay, so we got a nice little quick attack. I'm boosting five decibels into a negative one dB limit. I am adding a little bit of saturation and here where you can control the style, it's how drastic or how audible you wanna hear that limiting. So the softer it is, the more transparent. Uh, balance is for the spectral balance. It tries to adjust it. I don't wanna mess with that too much. So I try to keep that low and uh, I don't want any bass control. Let's see if actually we put it to golden air. I think this one is for trap, right? It's a hip hop golden era. Let's see what it does. It boosts it up a few decibels, so I'm gonna bring it back down. I want to change this my attack time too. Yeah, 13, negative 13.5 luffs. I'm okay with that. So let's open up metric AB. I'm going to compare it to the unprocessed mix at parity. So they're going to be the same loudness. So we can actually hear what we did to our track. So I loaded up the unprocessed mix as my B track here in metric AB. And I'm initially going to play this track and have it match the loudness. So let's do that now. Okay, so as you can see, it pulled my FL Studio track down 8 dB to match the unprocessed one. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to bump this 3 decibels and go here to minus 5.2. So instead of pulling the mastered one down 8 decibels, I bumped the unprocessed one up 3 decibels. I know it's not going to clip because it'll never hit 0. And then that way I can bring both of them up to parity. So if I play here, you'll see that they'll have a relatively similar loudness. So let's start it with the unprocessed mix and then let's toggle it to the processed one so we can hear the difference that we made. So there you have it. You see the difference. It sounds a little bit more open, a little bit beefier. You can hear the instruments kind of coming out a little bit more than the unprocessed mix. Well, I hope you learned something in this video. If you enjoyed this kind of content, let me know. If you want to know more about the plugins that I used, or if you want me to review any of the plugins that I used, let me know and I can create some comparison videos or some plugin specific videos. I hope that this video has helped you understand some of the thinking behind how we can get our songs to go from basic to crisp and clean sounding and ready to be distributed on all streaming services. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure you like, subscribe, and as always, I hope that this inspired you to go and make some music. Peace.